Hey everybody, I hope you guys are healthy and safe. This is the Poco F6 Pro and this is the Poco F6, the two newest mid-range phones from Poco, launching globally, I believe, in Dubai today. So I have a confession to make. Initially, I wasn't going to make a video on these two phones because I thought they were very similar to existing Xiaomi mid-rangers and also mid-rangers from other brands. I mean, at this point, Chinese brands pump out so many mid-rangers that I already know what to expect and I think a lot of my viewers know too. You already know that a Xiaomi mid-ranger is going to give you performance from a silicon that's a little bit better for the money than what Samsung or Google will give you. You're going to get an excellent screen and a really good main camera and then the other cameras will be a little bit mediocre like an ultra wide camera that's like 8 megapixel or like a useless 2 megapixel macro sensor and no zoom lens so you already know what to expect and the second reason I didn't want to make a video on the phones is because these are re-releases from phones that already launched in China I think they were called like the Xiaomi Turbo or something however after setting up both phones and using it for a few days I realized that I should not be so kind of snobby I should make a video on these phones even if a relatively short one because there are people out there you know who are not as privileged or as spoiled as me they cannot afford to pay 1000 US dollars for a phone they are looking for a phone that performs very well but it's under whatever the price bracket is whether it be $600, $500, $400 and I think Chinese brands consistently do a very good job at that. They give you better value proposition than what Google, Apple, or Samsung will do. So both of these phones run on Qualcomm chips that are not underpowered. This guy, the Pro, runs on the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So a flagship chip from just last year. This guy, the non-Pro, runs on the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8S Gen 3. Now if you're wondering, wait a minute, this is the 8S Gen 3, this is the 8 Gen 2. Isn't this chip better? Well, no, because Qualcomm is doing some really confusing naming scheme here. So basically, in terms of pecking order, the AS Gen 3 sits below the H Gen 3 and also below the H Gen 2. However, I believe the AS Gen 3 still has a little bit better single core performance, but for multi-core, the H Gen 2 is still better. But basically, this phone still has a better chip, even though the naming scheme is very confusing. Because if you look at the numbers, you would think this guy has the better silicon. As for displays, both of these phones have excellent screens. 6.67 inch OLED panel, 120 hertz. Now the Pro model has Quad HD resolution, like 3400 by 1440. This guy only has a 1.5K resolution. I say only because I don't think most people can really see a difference between a Quad HD panel and a 1.5K or 2K panel. Some people out there say you do. I don't know, man. Are you Hawkeye from the Avengers? Because I have perfect vision. I don't need to wear glasses at all. And I cannot see the difference when I look at these two screens, at least in terms of sharpness and resolution. Where I do see the difference is the F6 Pro has a brighter panel. It gets up to like 1200 nits. This guy, consistent brightness is just about 500 nits. And then maximum peak brightness is 1200. Definitely, if you're using this outside under the sun, the Pro screen, it's a little bit easier to see than the non-pro screen but when you're indoors like right now both of these screens look perfectly fine now you add to the fact that both of these phones have stereo speakers and they have flat aluminum railings that makes the phone easy to hold you have yourself a very good media consumption machine like a phone you just hold like this to watch netflix or youtube now the two qualcomm snapdragon chips are both top performers even in 2024 the hn2 is basically flagship level it's just one generation older than the hn3 we have reached a point where for silicon from qualcomm apple and maybe mediatek the chips are so powerful that even if you're using a flagship chip from a year or two years ago, it's still perfectly fine today. Now, I'm only talking about Qualcomm, Apple, and MediaTek. If you're like the Samsung Exynos or Google Tensor, then no, you need the newest chip possible. Both guys have 50 megapixels main cameras with f1.6 aperture, and both cameras do a really good job. We are now at a stage where every big name phone brand are able to produce a very capable solid main camera like meaning even if you buy a 250 dollar phone in 2024 as long as the it's coming from a big name brand like a xiaomi a huawei a samsung a google you're gonna have a main camera that is very capable produce shallow depth of field have balance hdr all that the true test of a camera system in 2024 like like you know how you tell the difference between a great flagship camera and a mid-tier camera 
It's in the zoom lens and in low light photography and videography. So you watching main camera footage right now? Switch out to the ultra wide camera. Back up to the main camera, digital zoom. So 6x digital zoom right now. That's the max. Back up to the main camera. Now speaking of pricing, I don't know the official price of these two guys yet, but going by past history and also what has leaked on the internet so far, I think it's safe to say the F6 Pro, it's gonna retail for about 600 US dollars. This is in the international global market. Because in China and in Hong Kong, it's gonna be a little bit cheaper than that. But global market, about 600 bucks. This guy, total guess here on my part, I would say 350. And for that, you're getting an excellent screen, a really quality SOC that's still flagship level, stereo speakers and premium build, aluminum frame, Gorilla Glass Victus protecting the front. So I think these two phones kind of tick the main boxes that a casual consumer would need. With the package, you also get a 120 watt charging brick for the Pro and a 90 watt charger for the non-Pro. So both of these guys have 5,000 mAh batteries and that means this phone can charge from zero to 100 in about like 26 minutes. While this guy will take about 34, 35 minutes to top up from zero to full. Both phones are comfortable to hold. The Pro weighs 209 grams. The non-Pro weighs 179 grams. So this is very light and they're both about like 8.1, 8.2 millimeters thick. Despite the slim frame, you still have Xiaomi liquid cooling thermal plate inside. So during 20, 30 minute gaming sessions, I found that the phone didn't really heat up too much and I did not see any performance stutter. So yeah, this is the Poco F6 Pro and the Poco F6 in a nutshell. This is not a full review, but more like an overview. And I think if you're on the market for a phone under 600 bucks, this is worth a look. And then if you need to shave another two, three hundred dollars off the budget, this guy is worth a look. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 in 2024 is still perfectly capable, powerful. And the Snapdragon 8 S Gen 3 is the newest chip from Qualcomm. So, you know, it's very optimized, even though I think Qualcomm's naming scheme is confusing as hell. So yeah, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. It will help me a lot. I have a lot more coming. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.